Creatine is perhaps one of the most effective supplements that we have to improve our performance and body composition. Now that's pretty well known, but are you aware of the growing body of evidence to support creatine's ability to optimize things like brain performance, eliminating brain fog, and even improving general health through increased energy availability, as well as methylation. Now the research for creatine has even extended to things such as improving bone health and improving glucose tolerance. Creatine is not an underrated, but I would say a more overlooked supplement that a lot of people think it's just for uh, getting gains or for bros getting gains in the gym, but that's simply not the case. I'm going to share with you the cellular benefits of this affordable supplement and why you probably want to include it in your daily regimen. I apologize if the lighting keeps shifting, the sun is popping in and out behind these clouds here uh, in front of my window, so I apologize for that. My name is Steven, welcome to my YouTube channel. I appreciate you being here. Before we get into the benefits of creatine, I think it's important that, that I lay out what actually happens in our systems when we consume or supplement with creatine and what it does. What that's gonna do is set up proper context so that we can further or better understand uh, the benefits that I'm gonna lay out a little bit later. So, very important part of the, of the conversation. It's a little science-y, but don't worry, I'm not a science guy, so I'm gonna make it very easy to understand. Uh, without further ado, let's uh, go draw it out. Okay, so what we have here are two glitter Crayola crayons courtesy of my six-year-old daughter. So let's start off with ATP. This is what we like to call, what I like to call life energy. Without ATP, no process happens in the body. So ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate. Tri meaning three, phosphate meaning phosphate groups. So we have three phosphate groups just like that going on. Then we have a process called D. I usually write in cursive. I'm trying not to so that you can read this. Dephosphorylation. There we go. Dephosphorylation. Dephosphorylation means that we lose a phosphate group. Okay. Now, when dephosphorylation happens or dephosphorylation, 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 sorry, I'm pronouncing that wrong. That means that energy is released. When energy is released, this drives, it's limited, and it drives cellular reactions. I'm going to put cell R. So when dephosphorylation happens, we no longer have three phosphate groups. It's no longer tri. Now it's di, di. So when this happens, we now have a d p, two phosphate groups. Now in order for energy to keep happening, for the cycle to keep going, ADP needs another phosphate group to turn back into ATP so this process can happen all over again so that more energy can be released so more cellular reactions can happen. When we consume creatine, in our system, our phosphocreatine stores go up. And this is a 10 to 40% increase in our phosphocreatine stores. Phosphocreatine, creatine phosphate, same thing. Okay? So when we consume creatine, our creatine phosphate stores go up. So what happens with this is that creatine phosphate donates its phosphate group right here to ADP at this part in the cycle. Donates. So now, what do we have? Now we have ATP all over again. And this goes back to the top of the cycle so it can happen all over again. So creatine allows for faster, quicker energy to happen in our bodies, to happen in our cells. This allows or this happens in the muscle cells as well as the brain cells. So that's one way, that's one thing that happens when we consume creatine. And this is gonna play a major role in all the benefits that I'm about to list out. So now that we know what happens when we consume creatine or when we supplement with creatine, let's talk about how that, I mean, that alone, what I just drew out for you, 
is enough, in my opinion, to want to supplement with creatine. I mean, just that increased energy availability, the quick source of energy, the, the support that we give the ATP process, that alone should be enough. But let's dive into some of the further benefits. Now, I'm not going to start off by talking about muscle gains and how creatine can increase your muscle size, your performance, your your, your reps, your sets, and all that, which is a common benefit that a lot of people talk about. I am going to touch on that at the end, but I want to start with the mind-blowing stuff. The stuff like methylation is what I want to start with. So methylation is a biochemical process that allows many different biochemical reactions to happen in our body. It, uh, it regulates the activity of our cardiovascular system, uh, of our reproductive system, detoxification system, and even neurological systems as well. So what does that mean? At the end of the day, uh, methylation allows things like DNA production to happen, neurotransmitter production, fat metabolism, estrogen metabolism, eye health, cellular energy, the list just goes on and on. Now, with that being said, let's talk about Sammy, our good friend, Sammy. Sam E, S adenosinylmethionine. S adenosinylmethionine is built from methionine. You can hear it in the name. And it plays a very important role because it is the most important methyl donor in our systems. So SAMI regulates methylation. It donates its methyl group so that methylation can happen. Now, keep that in mind. Let's talk about the synthesis of creatine for a second because we can make creatine ourselves. That happens in the liver. And we need a few different amino acids to do that. Arginine, glycine, as well as methionine. Now, what is SAMe made of or built on? Methionine. So when our creatine stores are low, when we're using a lot of energy, when we're not supplementing, uh, whether in the muscle cells or the brain cells, when our creatine stores are low, SAMe is forced to give up its methionine to the liver so that we can synthesize creatine. So what does that mean? That means that when creatine stores are low and we're not supplementing, SAMe, our SAMe reserves are being used to synthesize creatine instead of regulating methylation. So what happens when we supplement with creatine is that number one, it's uh, our liver doesn't have to work as hard. We don't have to synthesize it ourselves. So we support our body in that process. But that means that there is a decrease in the methylation burden on our system. So now our SAMe reserves can go and regulate things. I'm sorry, can go and regulate methylation so that many different things can happen, such as DNA production, neurotransmitter production, fat metabolism, estrogen metabolism, all the things that I mentioned can happen a lot faster and more efficiently as they should. And so there's one specific study that actually showed that supplementing with creatine had a 40% decrease in the methylation burden on our systems. For a very affordable supplement, that all you have to do is add it to your post-workout shake or to a shake, to a smoothie, to some water or something. That alone should be enough to want to benefit with creatine. So in short, supplementing with creatine allows uh, not just our liver to not work as hard, but it allows our SAMe reserves to be used for things like regulating methylation, which has a cascade of or a domino effect of different health benefits just from that. Very powerful supplement. And what I just shared with you isn't just a theory or an idea. This is stuff found in the scientific literature. And I'm going to link all studies that I talk about in this video down in the description so that you can do some further reading yourself. Now let's talk about muscle. No, I'm not talking about gains. I'm talking about our mental muscle or our brain. Creatine has also been shown to provide a lot of benefit, not just in the short term with cognitive performance, but as well as in the long term and to prevent cognitive decline. I don't know about you, but I'm all about preventing cognitive decline. I don't wanna get dumber as we get older. I wanna get smarter and better performing. Now, what I drew out for you in the beginning, how consuming creatine increases our phosphocreatine stores, which allows the ATP cycle to, to, which basically supports the ATP cycle so that we can create ATP faster, more efficiently, and quicker. That happens not just in the muscle cells, which I'll talk about in a bit for muscle performance, but that also happens in our brain cells. So if we think about times, especially uh, you know, if we think if we think about performing tough tasks or using our brain under times of stress, we need adequate ATP supply. In order to do that, we go through a lot of creatine. And eventually our creatine stores can start to deplete. That ties back into what I talked about with methylation, how when our creatine store depletes, SAMe needs to go to the liver to synthesize creatine and do its thing and then all that happens. But when we supplement with creatine, not only does it support the ATP supply in the muscle cells, but in the brain cells as well. I like to time my creatine consumption. Uh, I have a big bag here I'll share with you in a second where I get it and how cheap it really is. But I like to time my creatine consumption usually in the afternoon, 
on a relatively empty stomach in just some water. Sometimes I'll put it in a shake or a smoothie or something like that. But I like that because it gives me a nice little pick me up, a nice little energy boost. You know, when I'm gonna go pick up my daughter or sit down on the computer and do some work, I don't wanna be caffeinated too late in the day. Creatine does provide a nice kind of slight nootropic like effect. You get a really good focus with it. Now that's in the short term, that's in the moment. But creatine also supports brain performance in the long term as well. There's one specific study that I wanna share with you that talks about how creatine found that intelligence scores and working memory were significantly improved after six weeks of creatine supplementation. So it's not just something that you start taking and you get a little benefit, it's something that you start taking regularly and get kind of a compounded benefit over time. And there's another study that found that creatine supplementation uh, significantly increased performance in two sequential 15 minute math tests compared to placebo. So once again, it's coming out on top in very well done studies to improve brain performance, muscle performance, methylation, all these different things. So if you ever are looking for a nice little brain boost, but maybe don't want to, you know, throw down 60 bucks for a bag of lion's mane mushroom or something like that, I'm not saying creatine is as effective as a lion's mane. That still provides a really nice cognitive benefit. But if you're on a budget, creatine can definitely do the job and provide you some bang for your buck when it comes to better brain performance. Now let's talk about muscle gains and muscle growth and how it can help you with your athletic performance, whether you're a lifter or more of an endurance type of athlete that does a lot of sprinting and running and things like that. Creatine monohydrate is probably very likely the most researched and well-researched supplement in the sports nutrition and sports supplementation field. There was a, a, an analysis of, over, of a, just about 300 studies involving creatine and they were analyzed, 70% of these 300 studies showed benefits in high intensity exercise, such as sprinting and weightlifting. And here's a very key point that I really like, is that none of them found a negative effect from supplementing with creatine, none of them. And also, not just that, but to have 70% agreement in the literature, especially in sports supplementation, is not very common, that doesn't happen. This is like real well-researched stuff that uh, it's just, it's, it's proven at this point, in my opinion. Now, the benefits uh, of supplementing with creatine in terms of muscle gains and athletic performance, uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, there's a 10 to 40% increase in phosphocreatine stores, which allows better ATC, ATP supply. So you get faster, quicker energy in your muscle, which can actually help fuel your workouts. Now, aside from that, Creatine has also been shown to have a 5 to 15% increase in maximal strength and output, so you can perform more reps, perhaps with heavier weights, possibly, and up to a 5% increase in sprinting performance. Now, I do sprints every once in a while, maybe once every month, maybe. I try to do a little bit more, but I do weightlift on a regular basis now. Uh, recently started on a new program. So uh, what's also interesting is that beyond that, Creatine also directly impacts the size of your muscles. So the rapid increase in creatine stores in the muscle leads to increased hydration in the muscle cells. So there's more, you can think of water storage in your muscles, which gives them a fuller look and a fuller effect. But the gains don't stop there. They don't just make your muscles look bigger with increased hydration, but there's one study that found over the course of four to 12 weeks, subjects who consumed creatine showed a two to four pound increase in muscle mass compared to a placebo. So no matter who you are, an extra two to four pounds of lean muscle mass could benefit any of us, it's very metabolically friendly. You're gonna look better, you're gonna perform better. I don't care who you are, we could all use maybe an extra two, three, four pounds of muscle. Now I do wanna make clear creatine is not some magic muscle building supplement that you know you can just start taking it and all of a sudden you're gonna get shredded. That's not the case. This is often in a company with regular workout routine. Now, if you're watching this and if you're subscribed to my channel, if you're not, you kind of should be by now. You're, I mean, you're this far into the video. Uh, but I'm assuming that you watching this video probably have some kind of exercise, movement, workout routine that you do on a weekly basis, whether it's weightlifting, sprinting, something like that. So I assume you're already doing that. And if you're not, you definitely should if you care about your health and your well being. It's not just about food. Exercise is a part of being healthy. Light exposure is a part of being healthy. All these different things. Uh, so if you're already doing that, which I assume you are, 
simply adding a scoop of this white powder that's very affordable into your water, into your shakes, into your smoothies that you're already taking can give you a bigger ROI on something that you're already doing. If you're already working out, why not just add a scoop of creatine in there? That's gonna give you more bang for your buck. Imagine over the course of 12 weeks, the muscle that you're naturally gonna build, add creatine, that could be an extra two pounds of muscle, an extra four pounds of muscle based off what this study says. So very powerful. It's not magic, but it is really a kind of mind blowing supplement that, like I said, is kind of overlooked. Uh, it can provide some really good benefits. So when it comes to marketing and buzzwords and all these super hot super foods and super supplements that are popping up on the market that are being marketed to you, I don't see why creatine isn't being pushed more. Oh, actually, I do know why, because it's really cheap and uh, it's probably not a lot, a lot of profit for a lot of these companies. That's why they're not selling it. Now, what companies will try to do is tell you that their form of creatine is better than creatine monohydrate. Creatine ethyl ester, creatine hydrochloride, buffered creatine, they have not been shown to have a more superior effect than good old creatine monohydrate. Over all the research, creatine monohydrate is the most studied. It is all, it also always comes out on top. So at best, all these other crazy cool forms of creatine will perform just as well as monohydrate for probably a higher price. Again, watch out for marketing when it comes to creatine. All you need is creatine monohydrate, three to five grams a day, put it in your smith, your shakes, your smoothies. I like to have it in a glass of water, usually towards the afternoon. And this is one kilogram. This is not a sponsored post from bulk supplements, but you can get creatine monohydrate. You can choose what size bag you want. I got a kilogram for 20 bucks. A kilogram, if I'm taking five grams a day, this is gonna last for 200 servings. This is almost a year supply of creatine monohydrate. It's gonna provide all these different benefits that are proven that I can feel for $20. That is absolutely insane. Talk about affordability. This definitely I would make a priority. Uh, I mean, use your own judgment, use your own research. This is not medical advice. None of, the, none of this is intended to be medical advice or a substitute for medical advice. So, you know, do your own thing is what basically what I'm trying to say, but this stuff fucking rocks. But I'll leave a link to this down below. What's really cool is you can just pick your size, the size of the bag, depending on your budget. I mean, they have a smaller, I think like 250 gram bag for like 10 bucks or something. It's crazy. So go check it out if you like. I hope I brought you value with this video. Creatine is a super supplement. And uh, just because it's not profitable, companies aren't pushing it. Uh, but it's, it's just really interesting how that works. And if you need, have any questions, if you have any thoughts, if you have any concerns, leave a comment down below. I would love to connect with you. Uh, let me know what you thought of this video. If you're this far into it and you haven't yet subscribed, make sure to hit that button. Give it a thumbs up, give it a like. I appreciate you, I love you. Stay tuned, more content is coming every single week. I will see you in the next video. Have a great rest of your day.